think we have to really um, honestly plan, plan for what the future projections in terms of population look like. My concern is, my concern was always is that COVID-19 has changed the way that we deliver health care. It changed the cultural model of care. And so decision makers um, were making cultural decisions that had huge significant impact on the way that as Indigenous people that we consider health and well-being and the communal way in which we um, work, live, breathe, and, and tongue together at death. And the challenge for that was that I've seen also many um, Māori nurses that were extremely compromised by the decisions that were being forced upon them to exclude Fano from being there as their mother or father or newborn baby passed away. Incredibly difficult cultural decisions that um, seem to come out of the policy makers as opposed to this bicultural kind of tetriti commitment and way of working. So that, I think we learned from the Spanish flu and subsequent um, pandemics that Māori need to be at, also at that decision-making table. And so moving forward, Māori definitely need to be part of um, what any response looks like. And I was often heard from Fano members that perhaps some of the criteria that might be applied might be that if you're an Indigenous young boy, that you may not be given the same um, ability to have access to ventilators purely because of your colour. Now, I'd hate to think that that's um, the way, but that's what Fano was saying to me. Well, I'm not going to have any chance if I got COVID. So I think we need to be open about how we move forward how we change models of care, how we absolutely respond to a bicultural way of planning for pandemics. Many um, nurses that I know would go out into the rural communities to reach out to those communities to ensure that they were okay. But largely, during level four, they were left to their own devices. Now, these were people that were in poor communities. And the nurse um, said to me that they reminded her of shanty towns. They were makeshift shacks that nobody kind of um, seemed to care about those communities. So I think it's a lot we can learn from moving forward to ensure that the people that are living within the CBD are not more advantaged by the people that live out in rural, um, remote communities. They all deserve the same level of care. I think if I look from a cultural perspective, um, Māori and Pacific were already in a crisis before COVID. They were in more of a crisis with COVID. So we need to make sure that our system is always responsive in a timely way and not just when the crisis happens. So there were many stories um, that we'd heard that a whānau member that was trying to get access to um, health and support had tried for 18 months. The minute COVID we went into level four, all of a sudden the services became available. Now, 18 months out of trying to access services, the quality, this quality of life deteriorated. We need to be making sure that our system is responding quickly now as we prepare for whatever pandemic comes. Lessons learned to me, we've got to have some honest discussions. We haven't yet had an open response that we're going to review all of the system responses to COVID. Um, if we're not prepared to do that and only look at piecemeal kind of reviews, um, it's sort of patchwork kind of process. We're not actually going to have an honest discussion to look at what preparedness actually looks like so we don't disadvantage other pockets of community or other peoples. Part of that discussion needs to be how can we ensure that if the borders remain closed or have to close, that we're a sustainable Aotearoa, sustainable in terms of resourcing, but also in terms of health workforce. We were incredibly lucky that it didn't grip, um, so to speak, because we would have been really struggling for a response from a health workforce. So we've got a lot of things we need to put on the table. Mm -hmm. I think there's certainly pockets where there has been opportunities and show an improvement. I think that we've got to be really careful that sometimes we don't replace the face-to-face, -face, the value of a, a contact and a meaningful discussion face-to-face -face, mm -hmm. um, for something that's done electronically or by Zoom and make diagnosis of somebody's well-being over an electronic means. So there's got to be um, a little bit of both moving forward. 
Um, I have seen that there's an increased use of technology to make diagnosis and to, to keep people linked in and, and communicate. But I've also seen us um, slip quite quickly back. Change is not going to be coming unless there is some really clear guidelines to push change, to sustain that change, to keep moving forward. And I think um, since we've come out a little bit, some of the systems that should have needed an overhaul, they've slipped back because it's more comfortable to go with what you know. So I think um, certainly financially people have looked at doing Zooms more readily because it's cost effective. Um, whereas some of the systems within the hospital have reverted back to where they were and are disadvantaging some of the people that, populations that most need to access services.